Welcome to Pillars of Eternity. Where we are creating a new game and a new character. Tackle the Path of the Damned difficulty. I had started a blind playthrough on hard but found it a tad too easy and I want to restart the Path of the Damned so it will not really be a guide run because it's mostly a blind run still so I'll just keep you entertained by um, making an individual troop as I think the there are enough like story playthroughs already with all the characters and I want to make this an individual troop, a classic role-playing group of uh, rogue, fighter, mage, cleric, bard and ranger. Now let's see how we'll fare. I have Pillars of Eternity, The White March Part 1 and 2 It's reserved. We'll make this like the, the Grand Arch of Pillars of Eternity. We'll play it through. And also White March 1 and 2. So, let's start with a character generation. We're not going expert mode because, as I said, I'm playing this half blind. We're not going Trial of Iron because I have had problems with the game crashing and I don't know what will happen to the save game. But you cannot change Path of the Damned in game. So you can rely on a very um, difficult and entertaining Path of the Damned we're taking. And I'm also, I think, going to role-play our character a bit, so... It is more fun to follow him. We're not the doing well to everyone guy. We're more of a... Hmm, punk, maybe. Someone who isn't keen on supporting authorities. Maybe a little bit of an outcast. Because, yeah, everyone loves that anti-hero. It's more interesting that way. So, if you have a nice idea uh, how the group should be called, please tell me. I'll include it later. The first few episodes. I'll wait for feedback. Incorporate it. Because I think it's more fun Five that wagons way. grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Indeed we will not. I'm going to play a Mariel character. God like to. Play something different. God like doesn't look too pleasing to the eye. But I hope it will open up 
many interesting dialogue options and game options. So, taking that death godlike, increasing the damage. a little bit elven look so he's not that bulky I want him to be a rogue as we want him to start with like mechanics and stuff to get many of the the chests and stuff first so that we'll have an easier start and also uh, make a smooth transition to the following chapters by getting every treasure there is because that's what motivates us. I want the blinding strike or his versus reflex. So uh, now we got a blinding strike. We're going for the attributes. And despite might being so high up here, might isn't like the really the best stat for a rogue. At least as I have I have done some research, I've tried some things out and I think dexterity is much better because it doesn't not only influence your action speed it also has an influence on cooldowns incredibly helpful we're going to put everything down here we're not gonna need resolve we're not a tank in any way what we'll need is perception you want to hit things. And it's important to hit things too. And we want some intellect. So that our uh, abilities are more effective. Because we want to fight through weapons, but we also want that effects like blinding strike are actually doing well. We'll leave the constitution at that and hope it's good. We'll have a quite a good fortitude save from the might. Excellent reflex save and a not so good will save, but we have to take a compromise. At least one. We're going to be from the Dead Fire Archipelago as we want we just want to expand the dexterity also. It's like it's cool, it's it's pirate country and You look like that you probably have gone to the sea where not many people ask what you've been and in in his case he has been a slave has he I'm still not Totally keen on that, so it could also have been just a laborer. How uh, would 
Drifter isn't something we want to be, because this is not going to be a stealth-based joke. So... He's either a slave or a laborer. I think I'm going to make him a laborer. With the good mechanics. Um, the athletics, we're going to need athletics because it's a combat rogue. And we want to... Uh, get the... get the traps open, all that. So, ah, yeah, drifter, laborer, and slave all have one thing in common. They are basically against authority. Drifter will help me at the start mainly. So I think I'm gonna take the drifter. You never quite fit in, and also goes well with our RP. Not fitting in and rebellion against the system. What we'll do, so... We're going to be a drifter. These are, like, very cool. Looks. This is a bit... I don't know, very strange. We're going to take that, which is also very strange, but still has a humanoid expression. Our favorite color is black. Uh, let's see. Oh, this seems to fit. There's a strange guy here, a really strange guy. Painted in black. This is going to be a gothic adventure. And we're of course... <laughs> no, we're not gonna be uh, feisty, benevolent. We're going to be well. sinister. I've uh, used the name generator. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. As this is like a reminiscent game, reminiscent of Baldur's Gate, so I wanted like an old elven-like name as he has the elven statue, statue of of the, of the godlike, the godlike elf. It's going to be called Kevava Forge Dawn. Yeah, he's. Creature of dawn, dusk. Let's start this adventure. I am excited. This is gilded well. Caravan Master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red moustache, sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight everybody stays put, and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last the current master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle round here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink called a springberry, about the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker, but see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. He nods in your direction. 
Spoffle nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Uh, where are we going to find this? Grow on a bush that's common round here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. What are those? Nothing ruins? you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. And who did build Got the Got different ruins? names for them. Settlers called them in Gwithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. And how dangerous is it out there? Not if you hurry about your business, and not if the weather holds up. There is concern in his tone. He does not deliberate. Well, let's kind of ask more about that weather, that dangerous weather. What kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year, rain mostly, and wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here time to time. Locals call it a beowick, born out of the ether, the spirit's path. Never seen it myself, never care to. What are these huge rocks coming out of the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. Well, I'll go see about those berries then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's nights sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her, you're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you, Hayadin should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. All right, so. Let's see you next time. After the intro is done now. We'll start next. We'll start next time with the the whole area to close this opening chapter.